I'm Scott Kerr, and you're listening to Facing the Giants, a podcast where I speak to today's luxury entrepreneurs about taking on the Goliaths of the industry. My guest on Facing the Giants is Amelia Fazolari, CEO and one of the co-founders of Sincoro Spirits Group and Sincoro Tequila. Sincoro Tequila was launched in 2019, three years after Amelia and owners of four National Basketball Association rival teams, including basketball great Michael Jordan, got together for a friendly dinner and bonded over their shared passion for tequila. The five of them decided to join forces and, as they put it, create the finest tequila anyone has ever tasted. Since its launch, Sincoro Tequila has been making serious waves in the spirit sector, selling about 2 million bottles nationally and winning numerous awards in accredited spirits competitions. Welcome, Amelia. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much for joining me and happy belated National Tequila Day, which I think was last week. That's right. So I want to rewind a little bit. Um, before becoming an entrepreneur, you were in the financial sector for a good part of your career. Could you share a little bit about your professional background before starting Sincoro Tequila? Sure, I'd be happy to. So for nearly 30 years, I worked uh, in financial services. I started at Moody's Investor Service and then most of my career was at Bloomberg. I spent over 20 years there. Do you know during my time at Bloomberg, I was tapped very early on to work on startup businesses. And the projects ranged from media to energy to pharmaceuticals. Uh, it really uh, spanned many different industry sectors. Uh, and one thing that I learned from Mike Bloomberg uh, was that he taught me that the subject matter really doesn't matter. You can learn that. You know, you can become an expert in a particular subject by studying it and researching it. But what really mattered was your approach to starting and running a business. And that's really held true. I think a lot about that. And I think about my experience in starting and running businesses under the Bloomberg umbrella, which has really prepared me for my role today as CEO. Were you a tequila drinker back then? I enjoyed tequila, but not as much as I enjoy it now. I have to be honest. <laughs> I, <laughs> I enjoy why. it much more now because I drink Sincoro. Take us through the story of how you and four NBA owners, including Michael Jordan, became, I'll call it accidental tequila entrepreneurs. It's such a fascinating story. If you can share it with my audience. Sure. I'd be happy to. I get this question a lot. So it was the summer of 2016, and we were all in New York City for the NBA Board of Governor meetings. And the five of us decided to get together for dinner the first night. And something really magical happened. We are arch rivals, uh, the five of us that represent four NBA teams, but we bonded. We bonded as friends and it was all over tequila. And we realized that night we had a shared love for tequila. And we started talking about what we wanted in a tequila. And we realized that we wanted a tequila that was ultra smooth and had a long, beautiful finish like a fine cognac or a bourbon. And that was, those were to the two main characteristics. And we talked about how great would it be if we created this tequila? And really that's kind of where the concept of, of Sincoro was born. We had many dinners after that, always over tequila. Michael was the true tequila connoisseur in the group. Mm -hmm. And he led the conversation. He actually taught us how to drink tequila. He likes to drink it with one large rock and a slice of orange. <laughs> and it was all about sipping. And, in, and enjoying the moment, really chilling and enjoying the moment was the statement that we would say. And at that point, we decided that we were going to set out to create the world's most delicious tequila. And we wanted to create the gold standard. And that's really where the name Sincoro comes from. It's two Spanish words, Cinco for five and Oro for gold, because the five of us are determined to set the gold standard in tequila. And I'll have to say, I have to add, you know, we are a highly competitive group. Yes. And we are relentless in our pursuit for greatness. And Michael definitely sets the bar in that category. So, you know, when you speak to a lot of spirits entrepreneurs about why they started their company, the common response is that they couldn't find a product they personally enjoyed. That appears to be the case here with the starting five owners of Sincoro. So with a crowded category of high-end tequilas on the market, what unmet need in the ultra-premium sector did you feel you were filling with this tequila? You know, we realized there was an opportunity in the market to create a new style of tequila, uh, one that was rich and delicious, one that uh, people would love to sip, like a luxury spirit that was akin to a fine cognac or a bourbon. You know, we were looking to create a modern tequila that offered 
a very complex and exceptional taste profile with a beautiful long finish. I, I would almost say the evolution of tequila. People who enjoy Sincoro are not only tequila drinkers, but also cognac and bourbon and whiskey drinkers as well. So it's not easy to enter an industry as a complete outsider, going into any industry from scratch, understanding your business is the first step to launching it. And a tequila brand business venture, it seems the first thing you must understand is the whole essence of tequila. So how do you find the right experts to help you navigate the ins and outs of producing a high quality agave spirit? Well, you know, Scott, we did it very differently. We did it really on our own. And for us, it was about creating a new and unique liquid from scratch. And Michael was instrumental in creating our taste profile. Uh, he was the true tequila connoisseur in the group and taught us a lot about tequila and how to enjoy it and drink it. Mm -hmm. We knew what we wanted, but making it happen wasn't easy. We wanted it to be made in a very artisanal way while still having a very new and modern taste profile. So in the beginning, we worked with three different distilleries and actually had them almost compete with one another. And in the end, one emerged that was really willing to go the distance with us. Um, look, we don't shy away from hard work. Uh, and it took us three years and we created over a thousand tequilas in that time frame before we landed on our taste profile. We weren't going to settle on anything but the best. And our liquid has always been our North Star and continues to be. So how active are all the partners in running the company? Like how in the weeds do you get in the production process? Yeah, we, uh, we're a very close team. We're all fierce competitors. We don't like to lose. And we all share a passion for creating and enjoying Sincoro tequila. Uh, you know, it, it is a love for us. And all the founders play an important role in the success of the brand. Uh, you know, my partners weigh in on innovation, on design, and certainly on the liquid. We all taste the liquid. Uh, in fact, most of our board meetings start with a tequila tasting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have those in the morning? <laughs> we can have them at any point in time, honestly. <laughs> we love Sangoro. You know, tequila has hundreds of different characteristics, and a lot of that is based on things like the conditions in which the agave was grown and the techniques in the production process. So with five owners involved in the taste testing process, you know, each of you with your own idea of what an ideal liquid should taste like, how hard was it to objectively land on a taste profile you can all agree on? We're, we are in a very opinionated group, uh, but since the beginning, we aligned on everything from how to approach the business to creating the taste profile to the packaging. And I think the main reason we all work so well together is that even though we are arch rivals and competitors, we're collaborators by nature and we know how to operate within a team. And that I think has really made a difference. And, you know, I'm very blessed to have the partners that I have. It's, it's an unbelievable group of people. Um, and we are all very dedicated uh, behind the product. So at the outset, who did you have in mind as the profile of the typical Sincoro drinker? What was it about the brand story that you felt would appeal to these people? You know, we didn't have a specific consumer segment in mind when we were creating the tequila. Our goal was to create the best tasting ultra luxury spirit on the planet. And the net result of that is a liquid that appeals to a very broad audience. And as I mentioned before, um, in fact, not only do tequila lovers love Sincoro, but whiskey, bourbon, and cognac drinkers who typically may not drink tequila love Sincoro too. And you launched your operations in 2019 with four different expressions ranging in cost from like $70 to I think $1,600 and distribution in 12 markets. Do you also have any pre-sell allocations to a select list of individuals and restaurants and bars to generate some groundswell among influencers? You know, looking back, uh, we did, but we did it in a very grassroots authentic way. Uh, because it took us three years to create the liquid, we had a lot of time to share what we were making with all of our friends, many of whom were restaurant and bar owners. So in a sense, we did pre-sell along the way. And we also had a great focus group of uh, tasters along the way as well. So by the time we launched, many people had heard of us um, and couldn't wait to support the brand. 
So the timing of the launch wasn't great with the pandemic hitting soon after. How quickly were you able to move your tequila business online? Uh, very fast, actually. Um, being a startup, uh, we can pivot very quickly. You know, we launched the Coro Tequila in September 2019. And although we got off to a, a super fast start, the brand was still very young when the pandemic hit. So my challenge as a CEO was very clear. I needed to identify ways for Sincoro to continue to thrive in this new environment while making sure we found ways to help the industry, you know, with the problems that the pandemic was causing. And so as a startup, we were able to move very quickly and focus on the off-premise and selling online, uh, doing virtual sales meetings, doing virtual tastings. And one of the things that really came from this was the importance of coming together as one team and having very open conversations, a lot of conversations about what was going on. Our communication was at an all-time high as a company at that point in time. Prior to the pandemic, we'd have you know, maybe company meetings once a month. We were having company meetings weekly mm -hmm. and just coming to the table and talking about what was happening, how people were feeling and problem solving together. And like you said before, Syncor was in its infancy stage. Were there some innovative ways you were building your brand and framing your value proposition to consumers while you were sort of hampered by just being able to do it online? Um, you know, as I said, we focused on the off-premise and we started to do a lot of virtual tastings that became a real thing. You know, it started to lead to companies calling us and saying, you know, we'd love to do a virtual tasting with you. We'll buy, you know, we're going to have our customers on online with us and we'll um, buy Sincoro for everyone. And this became known in the market. And we started to do these very regularly. And we found way, clever ways to work with liquor stores. Uh, one of the good things that really differentiated us from our competition during the pandemic was that we were fully in stock. And, you know, supply is something that we focused on very early on and making sure we had plenty of it and we continue to have plenty of supply. So we were in a great position to uh, pivot quickly and ad address the issues that were happening. Are you in all 50 states now? We are. We are. We're in all 50 states uh, and duty-free shops, the Caribbean and Canada. Uh, what are some of the key distribution locations that, you know, you want to target these super premium consumers? Are there any interesting distribution locations? Yeah. So our, you know, we're focusing on the top seven tequila markets and heavily investing in them. Um, you know, places like New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Miami, LA, Dallas, Chicago, Houston, Vegas are, you know, real key markets for us. Do NBA arenas carry Sincoro in their private clubs? Uh, of course. Our, our players love Sincora. <laughs> uh, so when are you hoping to take it abroad? So, you know, we plan to follow the luxury consumer everywhere they go, including abroad. So, you know, when, as we expand our footprint globally, we'll focus on key luxury destinations where we think our consumer will be going. Any particular international countries that you see as prime targets for ultra premium tequila? Look, I think tequila is becoming a really big thing outside of uh, the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, the U.S. remains the largest tequila um, consuming country, but it is really taken off abroad and places like the U.K., Germany, Australia are uh, markets that we would focus on. And then the luxury markets like, you know, the south of France, um, right. Italy, you know, China is interesting, and I think that there's a, a big opportunity for Sincoro in particular in China because of our unique taste profile and our affiliation with the NBA and Michael Jordan, of course. And last fall, you introduced your fifth expression, Sincoro Gold, which is a blend of all the brand's other expressions, both aged and unaged. Why do you feel the time was right to launch another high-end expression into the portfolio? Great question. It, you know, look, innovation is in our DNA. Sincoro Gold joins only a handful of tequilas that are uh, hovens, that are a blend of the different expressions. Um, Sincoro Gold blends all four of the Sincoro expressions. So it's a, it's a blend of the Blanco, the Reposado, the Añejo, and there are generous amounts of extra Añejo in Sincoro Gold. Mm. Uh, and the our extra in Aho is aged for 44 months. And, you know, we set out to create the world's finest tequila and Sincoro Gold is one of my favorite expressions. 
you know, we're going to continue to innovate and bring truly special, exceptional expressions to the market to, you know, really redefine luxury tequila. I want to talk to you about the tequila market. So Americans are having a torrid love affair with tequila. Two thirds of tequila is consumed in the U.S. market and has been climbing popularity for years. Last year, tequila overtook sales of American whiskey by value. Currently, the category sits in second place, but it's got that number one vodka in its crosshairs too. What do you think are the driving factors behind tequila's explosive growth? Over the past decade, a lot of new premium tequilas have hit the market and consumers are starting to shift their taste preferences to these types of tequilas, which is really driving the growth in the category. Tequila today is not the same tequila that many of your listeners had in college. For example, Sincoro is a sipping tequila and we don't encourage consumers to drink it as a shot, but instead to sip it and savor it. And tequila is also a fun spirit. People love to enjoy it together and I think for those reasons, the the growth in the category is going to continue, and we're excited to be part of it. Despite concerns about inflation and a possible recession, premiumization holding strong in the spirits category, cocktail culture is continuing to thrive. And this trend, along with the skyrocketing consumption of tequila, is great for brands like Sincoro. Yet the future could be uncertain as climate changes could threaten agave supply as demand continues to soar. Here's a case where tequila is a victim of its own success. Are you worried about tequila's future? I'm not. You know, tequila is growing faster than any other spirit category, faster than bourbon, scotch, cognac, vodka. The the tequila category, in fact, is predicted to grow to about 15 billion by 2025. And consumers are continuing to drink higher quality spirits. As for the popularity and the uncertainty of climate change affecting agave crops, We are very well positioned with our inventory levels to meet our ambitious long-term projections and and consumer demand. Supply is something that we have focused on and invested invested in from day one. Um, And so I I think that there's a very bright future for tequila. Celebrity forces are pouring resources into the tequila category, hoping to claim a portion of its popularity and the broad base of casual consumers who are responding to them. You know, The Rock, LeBron, Nick Jonas, Kendall Jenner, Michael Jordan, of course, with Sincoro, and a number of other celebrities have gotten into the tequila biz and it's not stopping. While many believe that the sheen of celebrity has, you know, bolstered tequila's popularity, there are those who feel it dilutes the soul of tequila, that some stars have got into tequila more because they're hopping on a trend and less out of respect for the spirit itself. What are your thoughts on this? Some celebrities are approached to lend their name to a spirit, do photo shoots and create advertising for a brand. We didn't do that. Michael didn't do that. Michael Jordan is one of the co-founders and he's an owner of Sincoro and he lives the brand. He doesn't take on the role of an endorser. You know, he created it because he loves tequila and wanted to create something never made before that was so delicious that he would love to share it with his friends. And that's why this group came together. Scott, at the core of our brand is a pursuit of greatness. And, you know, Michael sets the bar in that. And for us, it's about doing things at the very, very highest level. And that is how we approached creating this tequila. We will not settle until we have created the best. And if you think about how this, how we made the tequila, as I mentioned, it took us three years. We created the recipe. And we created over a thousand tequilas and we'd still be making tequila had we not gotten it to a point where we felt it was the very best. In fact, to this day, Michael and I taste every batch before we bottle because it has to be the best. You know, we are a very authentic group and, you know, we are doing this because we love it. And we love Sincoro and we want people to buy Sincoro because they love it and not because of, uh, because anyone is telling them to buy it. Uh, you know, somebody might hear about Sincoro because of Michael Jordan's involvement. I mean, he is 
arguably the most uh, recognized person in the world. Again, they may hear about it because of Michael, but they're going to buy their first bottle and many more bottles after that because of what's in the bottle and because of the beautiful packaging. That's, you know, the way we want to build a long-term successful brand. So speaking of packaging, you know, creating the perfect product design and packaging isn't easy at the best of times, and it's even harder for luxury products. Talk about the bottle and luxury packaging design for Sincoro and how it tells a story about the brand and engages the senses and conveys status. While we were making the, the tequila and we were very focused on the liquid, uh, Michael in the background was working on the bottle unbeknownst to the rest of the partners. <laughs> so Michael um, calls up Mark, Mark Smith, who was a former Jordan brand creative genius. Oh, right, right. He worked with Michael for decades and he called him up and said, Mark, I need a tequila bottle. And Mark says, okay, a tequila bottle. All right. Well, um, close your eyes, Michael, and tell me what you see. Describe it in three words. And Michael said, sleek, contemporary, and unique. And that was the brief. And that was the beginning of our bottle. And they worked together on it. And what's super cool is that our bottle has all these Easter egg designs in it and all these sort of hidden meetings. So if you look at our bottle, I believe it's the only five-sided five -sided tequila bottle out there. And the five sides are a nod to all five founders. And then if you feel the bottom of our bottle, it slants 23 degrees as a nod to Michael's jersey number. Huh. And the stopper slants down 23 degrees. There's a slight curve. If you look at the bottle from the side, there's a slight curve to it and it resembles an agave leaf. And because of this slight curve, if you take 23 bottles exactly and put them on the ground and line them up head to toe, they end up making a perfect circle which happens to be the diameter of that circle happens to be the same diameter as the tip-off circle on an NBA court. So now you're going to have uh, people out there buying 23, you know, <laughs> bottles. I think that's a brilliant strategy. <laughs> well, you know, after you finish the tequila, the bottle is so beautiful that you don't want to toss it. We've had people turn them into candles, but they'll, they'll cut off the top of it and they'll turn it into a beautiful candle or we've had someone make a lamp from them. We've had a chandelier made from a series of them. But what's really neat is that a lot of the bars um, will line their back bar with them because they're so beautiful. And it almost gives you a, a, a wallpaper effect, especially with our metallic gold bottle. And, and so that's neat to see. So what can we look forward to for Sincoro in the months ahead? Well, we have a super cool collaboration happening during the holidays this year. Um, we're going to be launching a limited edition bottle that we're very excited for. Uh, so you can, uh, people can tune into our Instagram page for more details on that, but we will continue to innovate. As I said, it's in our DNA and, and we love to create. Uh, we actually have two or three other liquids that we've been working on. And when it's the right time, we'll be uh, introducing them to the market as well. And how do you see the brand growing, you know, five to 10 years from now? We're going to continue to share our tequila with the world. And we would love to be the gold standard for ultra premium tequila and hopefully one day just spirits in general. Because as I said, our taste profile is very modern and appeals to many people. And uh, we are really excited about the future. And one of the things I love to hear is about people's first taste. And it's really satisfying to know that people enjoy it as much as we do. Amelia Fazolari, co-founder and CEO of Sincoro Spirits Group and Sincoro Tequila. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of Facing the Giants. Please tell a friend about the show. Now that you know this show, go check out my other podcast, The Luxury Item. It's a podcast on the business of luxury and the people and companies that are shaping the future of the industry. You can find The Luxury Item wherever you found this podcast. Facing the Giants is a production of Silvertone Consulting. 
I'll be back soon with another episode.